Right, so, okay, so let's talk about a few things, okay? This is a little different than some of the things, you know, some of the solos we used to play, like when you play a 12-part blues, right? That's 12 measures of solo. Who, who knows how many measures each soloist just played? Lucas? Yeah, 32 measures. So each soloist took almost three times as many measures longer as a normal blues force, okay? Now, um, and, and we'll get to you, don't worry, Michaela, you're going to get to play solo. Uh, so how, my two soloists, Nick and Jesse, how did that feel playing for that long? Right, yeah, how are you? I Right. Yeah, so, so Jesse said she ran out of ideas, and then Nick said he also ran out of ideas and kind of lost his place a little bit. Okay? Now, the more, you know, if you're really into improvising and soloing and playing in those situations, it's interesting because every once in a while someone's going to ask you to play for a really, really long time. Okay? If you listen to, uh, you know, if you listen to Moment on the recording, the song is almost 10 minutes long. And that's a bunch of so improvised solos. And those guys, some of the great jazz players, would play solos for five minutes long. I mean, we were talking, our solos here were, were pretty long. They were like probably almost a minute each. So that was a really long solo. Um, you know, each maybe not quite a minute, but those were really long solos compared to, you know, uh, 12 Bar Blues. So how can we, who has an idea for what we can do to uh, try to build a longer solo? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a great idea. So Ryan said, maybe mix up some of the, uh, the music that's already used in the song, you know, and take some ideas from the song rather than just uh, from your vocabulary of ideas. Lucas? When you play something in your solo, instead of trying to come up with something completely different, you can, like, just build off of what you've already played and just, like, keep adding to it. Okay, so, yeah, so building off of what you've played and adding to it, there's a word for that. Who knows what the magic word for building off of something you've already uh, played and bringing it further? What was it? Say it louder. Okay, augmentation might be a word. That's a, that's a, almost like a collegiate word. Yeah. Inspiration. So, yeah, if you want to play with inspiration, uh, you want to be inspiring to play. That's not quite the word that I'm looking for. To take something and build off of it, what do you do? Yeah. Expanding. That's a good one. Any other ideas? Yeah. Improving, hopefully, yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you can, that's more expanding and stuff too. So the word I'm looking for is develop. Okay? Development. You can develop a solo. Okay? So you start your solo grooving on a note. Da 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 that's just hanging around that one note. It's like Mr. Marquis was saying that you can base a solo around one note. Start it off simple, and then you know you can you can take that approach and you can try to play longer solos like that. Try to tell a story. Um, okay, so keep all that in mind. We're gonna we're gonna go from the solo section. We're gonna give Michaela a chance to solo. This time though, we're gonna split it in half. Okay, so the total 32 bars. We're gonna give two soloists a chance to play. 16 measures each. So Michaela's going to take the first 16 measures, and then is there someone else who has it? Uh, did you, did you want to try? Okay, cool. And then maybe you can, are you, are you going to be here next week, Ryan? No. Oh, okay. Maybe Ryan can do it, he's not going to be here next week. Okay, you want to give it a shot? Cool. So we're going to start 16 measures with uh, Michaela, and then 16 measures with Ryan, and you're going to start playing with the background stuff. So everyone's got to play quiet or else Ryan is going to have to do unnecessary work here. Okay? So we're starting right at the beginning of the solo section, um, which is, uh, I believe, letter I. Okay? Here we go. Yep. Yeah. 
Stand up proud. All right, fun. Everyone play quiet because she's playing a clarinet here. Okay? I know how hard it is to project clarinet. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Um, there's a few things. First of all, thank you so much for all the work you're putting into this. Um, the solely section, it's, uh, it's coming along, but that's definitely the part to work on, okay? So, uh, what is that? Uh, is that uh, letter E? When I get up letter E until letter I is the part to practice if we can. And also, take a look at the recording. You can play right along to it. Okay, play right along to the recording. It'll be good. Okay, great job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.
two, five, yeah. five. Good. You put those two together. I'm going to count to one. You come down to me two. You play me two and three. So not your head to you bring my direction. One, two, three, four, one. Good. Now give me the rest of the two. Two, three, four, one.
if you choose to audition with this piece, when the judge listens to you, he's going to be listening to see if you can do all the markings that are on the page. Can you play all those dynamics correctly? Can you play all those articulations? Can you make it really obvious? Okay. So try to start to think about those things as you're working it out. Here we go. 17. A one, a two, a one, two, ready, and. Okay. 
year ago, all the way beginning in the CD, which has eight of the tracks that we've been practicing this week. Okay, so you can listen to those from the beginning. If you're having things which you're still not quite sure how about how to close the track, listen to those CDs this week, those will help you out. You're also going to get a notice which says about all the um, all the performance dates and things like that. So that'll be coming, those coming attractions in just a few minutes. At this point, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Landry.
Hey, go back to uh, uh, go back to 21. Ready? Okay. Right. Uh, 29. 29. 21. 21. Sorry. One. Now listen. Right here, you have a crescendo, decrescendo, crescendo, decrescendo. Four measures. Okay. One, two, three, four.
to hear all the encoding, and, and you can listen to him, but I need you to, uh, uh, I need you to uh, but be leading. I want you to think that you're the lead and you're leading. I want you to make the mistakes now and maybe fix it. Because right now, if you actually follow him, it will be a mess. All right? He's doing it to guide you. But when you have, when you follow someone, your brain is not fast. All right? You have to be the lead and think that you are him leading. All right? All right? Here we go. At uh, 37, let me get just the sats. One, two, three, four. Can you play me a, can you play me 
uh, A instead, instead of G. Uh, you can't go any higher, right? Yeah, you can. You get that A? F9. I think a 9 would be nice. Oh, it's going to be, oh, how about F sharp? Yeah. Is it a G? Is it a, is this a G major? Yeah. Oh, no, it's F7 sharp 9. So if you play um, uh, A sharp, A sharp, A sharp, or B flat, can you do that? Is that really yes. scream it? Yes. That's, scream probably, it. Scream it that's probably a little, that's a little. All right, uh, bring it down a lot. Yeah. Okay. So play, so, uh, third, play, uh, you can try the high flat, but you play third minor. All right, ready? Let's try it, ready? Oh, it's going. Yeah, you can do the saxophone player if you don't want to do it. It's up to you. Ready? You can do it. Ready? One, last measure. One, two, three, four. Watch, 
because it's not here. It's at the high school. Okay? Make sure you understand that. Casey! Hey,